Hello, everyone. Good afternoon.、Uh, this is Katz from Yokoso News.、Uh, Yokoso News Weekly number 11. And I am having some little networking problem I see on、uh, Ustream. Can you guys hear me well?、Uh, please log on to social timeline. Um, if you are having stable connection, by the way, anyway, good. So, hello guys, this is Katz from Yokoso News, Yokoso News Weekly, Shukan Yokoso News, to talk about Japan in English,、uh, you know, in a really handmade style from Yokaichi Mie Japan. Yes, we are bringing you live from Yokaichi Mie Japan. It's number 11th. Of the show, Okie d o k we do every Sunday 4 p.m. Japan time,、uh, bringing you live. So,、um, today's topic is Marrying to Japanese Koksai Kekon. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure the people who's watching this show might be really interested. And marrying to Japanese, or you already may be married to Japanese girl or boy, you know, man or girl. So,、uh, you know, today we are we have some people, you know, in, you know, inviting on Skype. And okie dokie, I'm having network s problem, but、uh, hopefully it's going to work out fine. So now, On the screen, we have Akim and Sarah on, on the screen. Hello, guys. Hello. Hey, guys.、Uh, okay, Akim, would you introduce yourself? Yes,、uh, my name is Akim. I'm a freelance photographer. I also work with Run Magazine and the last number one、uh, English speaking magazine in the area.、Um, we just, so I'm just reaching down here, we just came out with our latest issue. Uh, this is with issue number nine,、uh, available in Nagoya area. And、um, yeah, like I said, I'm a photographer and recently worked together with Kaz. Yep. And Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Fukui, and I just recently moved to Japan, and I am married to a Japanese national. Good.、Uh, welcome to Japan. <laughs> Thank well, you. Welcome. <laughs> And、uh, we just met yesterday. So, yes.、Uh, it's it's,、uh, it's kind of cool. So, so uh, um, I have one more guest, Naoko, who might remember who scored the best two weeks ago from the、uh, center scan. She's、uh, trying to upgrade the Skype right now. So,、uh, Um, until we have her coming on board, I will just briefly talk about、uh, what's happening in Japan this week. So,、uh, first topic、um, Japan Film Festival Los Angeles is coming in April. Please、uh, do remember if you live in、uh, LA because、uh, Yokosuni is the sponsor. And、um, oh, let's cue the music. And then、uh, please follow us on Twitter yo, at Yokoso News. And we also have a Facebook. Please like us on the Facebook as well. And Run Magazine also do have、um, Facebook and Twitter. Yes. Please, please、uh, like us on Facebook. Run Magazine. R A M Magazine. So,、uh, that's cool. And yeah, we just met. So, Sarah, you're gonna be joining Yokoso News, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I just、uh, gave the administrative access of the Yokoso News to Sarah. She'll be reporting、uh, what's, you know, brief update of you know, Japan, her life in, in,、uh, through the Facebook. And、uh, eventually, she'll be posting some uh, um, uh, article on the. On the、uh, yokosonews.com, too. Hello, Junnobo san, how are you? And like, then yesterday we did something fun, right, Sarah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to,、uh, we went to Tonkatsu restaurant in Nagoya. It, the, it, oh, ton, yes. Tonkatsu is a pork cutlet. Look at this <laughs> picture on the Facebook. I have picture available so you guys can take a look. 
Yeah. Man, that was delicious. <laughs> it was uh, my first time eating at a tonkatsu restaurant like this one. Um, it, out here in uh, where I live, it's they're a little different, so. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Where do you live, by the way? I live out in Komaki. It's very close oh. to Nagoya. Yeah. Where the old airport used to be. Or yes. Still is. <laughs> I mean, there are still airports there, but... Yeah, yeah. Or, um, just near Kasugai, I believe, yeah. there's an airport. Yeah. yeah. Then we went to uh, Big Camera. <laughs> Very <We> busy. Bought... <laughs> you bought this uh, iPhone 4 case yes. of Evangelion. <laughs> 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 you look neat, so I, I, I'm hoping you, you're gonna take more pictures from iPhone and upload I, uh, them to uh, Yoko can... News. I can bring the phone over here if you want to see a better picture of yeah, the back. Yeah, sure, of the sure, face. sure, okay. sure. Hold on one moment, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So, next, then while she's getting the uh, iPhone, let's talk about some little serious stuff. Flu in Japan reached its peak. Mm -hmm. It now has about 1.76 million patients in Japan. Wow, that's a lot. So, uh, it's, right now it's the peak. So, people, be careful. Gurgle, gurgle your mouth, wash your hands as soon after you got back from uh, outside. And then sunny, try to sanitize as much as possible so mm -hmm. that you don't get sick. So, uh, yeah. Um, Sarah, would you, would, can you show uh, it to me? Yes. Wow, that's pretty cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it comes in oh, made well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. And I went to a local anime shop right down the road from uh, the station called Animate. Uh huh. And they had more um, of these phone covers, uh, mostly uh, Evangelion, but um, they had plenty of them. But most of them are for the 3GS right now. Mm -hmm. But um, they do have some of the uh, plug suits that the characters do wear. Yeah, <laughs> those are very interesting as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 not that in that area, so you got you you're gonna have to uh, re you know explain to me more uh, down down the road, Sarah. So uh, that's, that's oh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, uh, if you go, when you come out of going towards Big Camera, you go straight down to the left instead of going towards the right. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little shop there called Animate, and it's a few floors, and there's lots of anime stuff. Yeah, and then uh, that... they, they even have a cosplay shop on the very top floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, Anime is also the chain uh, too. I think they they spread across the uh, Japan, so uh, it's uh, worth oh, yeah. the store to cover. But uh, we'll, we'll 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 do it down the road. So yeah. going back <laughs> to the flu uh, warning. So uh, center, uh, I think center of infection. Just uh, research the institution something. I, I forgot the official um, English t uh, name of the institution. Sorry, but this is their map warning flu warning war uh, flu warning map. So uh, it's pretty much it's red. Every everywhere is red. So everyone be careful. Don't get flu. If you don't get flu this week or next week, uh, you you'll be probably safe because uh, we we'll, we we'll just. Uh, you know, it's we are in the peak right now. So um, yeah, and then couple couple interesting news was going on in Japan. Uh, one of it is that uh, the Ministry of uh, Health, Labor, and Welfare released a press release that the uh, number of foreign people working in Japan in 2009 increased by 15.5 percent in 2010. <laughs> so uh, 44 percent of them are Chinese and then um, followed by Brazilian and Filipinos and the total of uh, I think uh, so it's a uh, six hundred forty thousand people. It's it's almost six hundred fifty thousand non-Japanese people legally working in Japan right now, according to the statistics. Yeah. So uh, it's it's getting really easier place to work in Japan now nowadays. More job, more jobs, more non like an. Uh, 
more more like job that's not English teacher are available. That sounds good to me. <laughs> so uh, sorry, you just moved down here, but uh, you know, 10 years ago, it was really hard to uh, yeah. find a job for non-Japanese. But because of the globalization, and we start uh, realizing that how important it is to um, uh, have a global perspective. So uh, then it comes down to uh, this news that uh, Uniqlo's uh, company, First Retailing, uh, said that they are going to hire non-Japanese that their em new employees plan of 2012 they're going to hire 80% of new employee uh, from non-Japanese Nice yeah. Very nice But it's just, just a change Especially yeah. for Uniqlo Yeah So, what? What did you say? I said it's an interesting change especially for Uniqlo Yeah, yeah, yeah Well, because Uniqlo Apparel, you know, clothing industry, the, the market in Japan is already saturated. Yeah. So only the way that they can grow more is to go global. Mm. So uh, many Uniqlo store in China is opening up, are opening up right now and they want to expand to Thailand and Southeast Asia and more. I'm sure they're aiming to uh, North America and Europe yeah. as well. They're, they do have one in New York that I know of. Yeah, but I'm sure I, they want to expand more. So yeah, uh, yeah, definitely more than one store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> and they, they're gonna they're gonna launch the online store for North America as well. So you'll be able to sometime this this year or next year. So you will be able to buy Uniqlo clothing online finally in the U.S. and stuff too. Oh, that's good. So, so, uh, um, but we start, Japanese people themselves start raising the controversy. Why Japanese company is only hiring young Japanese? It's a discrimination, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it sounds really similar to what's, how, what's going on in the, uh, <laughs> you know, Japan, uh, I mean, United States. Mm. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, as, as the person who has been living in the US, so I kind of know what's going to be next, what's going to come next. <laughs> so, so we, I know, Yoko Sunyu, since I'm Japanese, I really want to uh, represent you guys to Japanese people, and I also want to create the bridge in between Japanese and non Japanese to understand better because they. I mean, I personally believe that they, they have to, you know, they have to um, accept the globalization and stuff, I, I think, personally. Especially mm. how popular Japan is getting lately all over yeah. the world. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. With so, the help of Yokoso News? Yep. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Let's hope so. So, uh, you know, if uh, you're looking to work in Japan, Uniqlo, uh, their 2012 employment plan is that th they are planning to hire 1,300 new employees in 2012. But 1,050 out of 1,300 will be non-Japanese. And in 2013, they are planning to hire 15 new 1,500 new employees in 2013. And 1250 of them will be non Japanese. So, uh, according to this uh, news on uh, Sankei News, no age limit. And then, uh, uh, pretty much, you kind of have to graduate from university or uh, grad school. Mm -hmm. And then, there's, there's going to have written test and then three interview. And they'll, they're now conducting the interview in UK, China, Korea, and Taiwan. But um, they're going to expand their recruiting uh, activity to the old country that they have the you know retail store. So that's going to include in the US as well. So they're going to start recruiting directly in the US. But the, the thing is that 
um, they're they're also they're just not going to recruit people to work in the country. They are looking to hire. You know, you you you. They also want to like uh, uh, looking for the executive class people too. Mm. So uh, you know, and they may, may the their plan is they want you to come to Japan and train and go back to your country and then um, you know work taking an important role and then maybe you you may become a chance to become an executive and stuff. So that's what's happening in Japan workforce right now. So. Uh, So uh, we'll so next we'll talk about it after the show. But uh, Harg Convention, which is the uh, it's called Harg. Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Harg Harg uh, Harg Convention. Harg Convention. Harg Convention. I have to go to. Uh, I I forgot the uh, actual name. Harg Convention. Wikipedia is great tool <laughs> to search on the internet. Uh, Harg convention of several aspects of international child abduction in 1990 and blah blah blah. Oh. Oh. I think, I think we lost Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah, so Harg Convention is. Okay, hold on. Harg Convention is the show that. Uh, okay, I just expired the. Uh, I have to do something. Okay. Bring all front. Uh, okay. The beauty of live streaming. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. <laughs> hi, Naoko san. Hi, Kikoimasu. Hi, hi. Okay. All right, cool. So, uh, Sarah, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, okay, good. Okay. I just, it's the beauty of live streaming. I just got the uh, expire my group video calling trial. I need to buy it right now. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see. Um, Junobo san, hello. And then I, they, he told me to lower the volume, so I did. So uh, we'll talk about getting married stuff. So uh, cool. So while I'm going to try to fix the uh, Skype issue, mm -hmm. can you um, can you guys introduce yourself from uh, Naoko, uh, Sarah, and Naoko? Naoko, uh, no, uh, let's start from uh, Sarah. Okay. Would you introduce yourself, please? My name is uh, Sarah Fukui. I'm from uh, South Carolina in the United States. And I'm married to a Japanese national and I just moved here to Japan. It's nice to meet all of you. Good. And Hello. then um, Naoko. Yes. You are from uh, Tokyo, right? I'm from Saitama. Oh, t Saitama. Okay. Uh, yes, would you, would you introduce yourself, please? Okay, I, mm, I was in Japan until I was 19, then I moved to the U.S. to study and stay there for seven and a half years, and I came back to Japan in 2009, mm. yes, in three years, and I'm married to an American guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, both aspect of uh, um, Japanese women married to uh, non-Japanese and non-Japanese women married to uh, Japanese. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's 
That's so it should be pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now go. Um, when you came back to Japan after spending so much time overseas, especially in the U.S., did you find it easy or difficult to get back into your culture? Very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Sarah, what do you do right now, and then what does your husband do? Well, right now I'm just. Uh, Doing the housewife deal, <laughs> and uh, but I'm going. I'm look right now. I'm looking for a uh, Japanese classes because I need to practice my Japanese more. I'm I'm not quite basic yet. Um, I can at least read katakana and hiragana, but I still got a long way to go. Um, right now, my uh, my husband he, he translates uh, English and also does some sales for a company and. Um, he also speaks Spanish fluently, but he doesn't get to use that too often in his job. So he does a lot of traveling and translating for his company. That's basically the deal that he does. Mm. Okay. How about how about you, Naoko? And can you guys enable the video? Try to enable the video right now. Okay. Click the video button. Video button. On the right, uh, right top. Okay. You see the ne next <laughs> left of uh, when you s hover up the mouse icon, the the left of the hang up, there's a stir video icon, the camera icon. When I press it, it tells me I need to get a group video. Okay, you know what? You know what, guys? Sorry, uh, I'm going to hang up <laughs> and call okay. you guys right away. All right. The, the, okay, I'm, I'm hanging up. Alright, hold, hold on, right. sorry. And when, sorry guys, I'm going to call... Hey, Sarah. Hello. And now call... Now call. I answered with yep. reading more. Okay, that should be it. That I did. I just did buy the G Skype Premium. Okay, good. Okay, I see Naoko now. Okay. Good. <laughs> then Akim. All right, good. Sorry, guys. I just uh, I just bought the. Uh, All right, uh, Akim. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Now I can see you guys on the okay. video. So, uh, so now, what what do you do right now? I work um, for a company who does exhibitions. Okay. International exhibitions, and okay. I help exhibitors. Okay. Like exhibitor support person. Okay. I see. Okay. How? How? Uh, what? What about your husband? What? What does your husband do? He right now teaches English. Okay. Couple different English schools. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, uh, you guys are. I mean, I also have friends living in the U.S. Married to uh, non, you know, Japanese guy and girl married to. Uh, Japanese people in the US. Why did you guys decide to uh, move to Japan and live in Japan, Sarah? Um, well, a lot of it had to do with his family wanting him to stay here. He is the only son in the family. Um, and I always did want to move to Japan, so it was a new adventure for me. I've lived in South Carolina my whole life and never left the country, so I thought it would be a great experience for me to get out there and do something else other than just staying in the United States. Mm. So this is a big experience for me and so far I'm really enjoying it and I'm glad that I moved here. Good, good. So uh, how long have you lived in na Japan right now? Um, well, the first time I came was back in 2009 and I lived here for just one month. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I came back again in 2010 for six months. 
Mm. And now this year I've just came back at the on January 1st and I've got my visa and everything now so I'll be here until I have to ex until I have to um, renew it again but right now it's become permanent so Good, 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 good. How about you, Naoko? Why did you uh, decide to move back to Japan with your husband? Yeah, I I did because I wanted to uh, get a job. What's that? Uh, I wanted to get a job. Oh, okay. Because the company I was working for, I was working for an um, architectural company. Okay. And, uh, it was in 2000, I don't know, like seven, eight. The economy was really bad, and the company went down. So oh, okay. I job and couldn't find another one, so I decided to move here. And my husband followed me. Okay, so uh, pretty much be you, you thought that you could get a better job in Japan? Yeah. Okay. There, there are no openings for a long time. For my job. Yeah. Oh, okay. What, where were you? In San Diego? Or? I was in Seattle. Seattle, okay. I, I met Naoko in uh, San Diego like uh, four years ago at the coffee shop in Starbucks. Yeah. When I was, when I was promoting my indie films. Mm. She, it was so coincident. She, she, <laughs> it was so fun. I, you were in my seat. What? <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the coffee shop I always went to, and you were sitting in my seat, and you look funny. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to. Yeah, we were we were showing my indie film at the uh, nearby uh, movie theater. Then um, I was trying to send a last-minute promotional email to all the people, and then I I knew I I somehow sent a friend request on MySpace to Naoko. Yeah. All, all by all the random thing, and then she recognized me. So that was that was so funny. By the way, um, so it, that was four years ago. And then so so how? Well, you kind of the next question you you kind of answered some of it already, Sarah. But uh, it's mm. been uh, it's been so total of like year a little bit more to live in Japan now. So how mm. how what do you? In, so, in terms life lifestyle wise, uh, what what is it so far? Um, lifestyle wise, it's a lot different from the lifestyle I had in South Carolina. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, here it's the uh, I guess it's a little hard to explain, but here um, well, we have our own home now, so I have to keep up with everything. Uh, normally, I was living with other family members so it was kind of a you know I did my thing and they did their thing so but now I'm, we're a homeowner so we have to do it all ourselves <laughs> so that's a little different in our lifestyle but it's not it's not too difficult um, and the food food here is much different I was eating a lot differently in the United States than I was here mm, yeah. so like the food here I mean granted both places have delicious food and I have no problem with that but it, it was a change for me and um, uh, I love the, the lifestyle, part of my lifestyle I love the most is um, I can actually get more exercise here because there's a lot of, we have a park right outside and there's a lot of sidewalks. In South Carolina there's not many sidewalks, <laughs> so you, you, you get you have the risk of getting hit by a car if you go out for a walk. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so I do love the sidewalks and vending machines and everything everywhere, so it makes life more interesting. You see a lot more out here. and. Um, I am enjoying my new lifestyle here, though definitely. Um, what's what's the best part so far? Um, probably how easy it is to get to places in South Carolina. We don't have bus access or train access. Mm. Um, there's and nothing's in very close vicinity. If I need groceries, I can just walk ten minutes up the road, and there's a grocery store or a convenience store, and it's it's a uh, very uh, useful for me. Uh, and very easy to and convenient, of course. Uh, if I need to go pick up something, they're like, "Oh no, I forgot something. How am I supposed to get to the grocery store? I can't drive." Well, 
thank goodness I can walk there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, uh, you live in Komaki, which is re it, uh, it's a pretty much suburban city of Nagoya. Yes, yes. So, uh, supermarket is available probably nearby because of the uh, uh, hand handful number of population. Mm. Of course, if you go to countryside, some areas still do require to have a car. How about yes. Naoko? Um, where, where? So, oh no, sorry, Sarah. So you move to where the uh, your husband's hometown? Yes. So uh, you have your um, husband's parents living with with you or nearby? They live five minutes down the road by foot. Oh, so okay. they're in, they're in the next they're in the neighborhood right next to us. So they're not too far if I need them. Okay. Okay. Good. How about how about you, um, um, Naoko? Where why did you decide to go to Saitama? Oh, we live in Tokyo, like the the edge of Tokyo. Okay. Because the, the truth is, I moved here because there's a kindergarten I went to. Oh, okay. I want to put my kid in in that kindergarten. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you have a kid now? No, no. <laughs> You're planning ahead already. Yeah. Okay, 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 good. So Women do plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, good. So, so uh, um, you live in an apartment or house? It's a, an apartment, yeah. Okay, okay. But you, it's it's the uh, region that you grew up. You, yeah, you chose... close to, yeah, close to my hometown too. Uh, maybe okay. 20 minutes drive, drive, but... Okay. Yeah, familiar. And uh, you work in Tokyo? I work in Tokyo. Okay, got it, got it. So, uh, um, so ne next, uh, the job. So, uh, Sarah, I know you are still kind of getting into uh, Japanese society and stuff. Yes. But uh, what are you, like, uh, what do you do? What are you planning to, I mean, of course, um, you kind of don't want to be stuck in the house all the time. No, so. definitely not. <laughs> so what are you planning to do? Like, are you planning to get the job? And what kind of job are you planning to get? And uh, what's, what's, the pro what's the step there? I am planning on getting a job. Um, the job I'm most interested in is teaching English to children. I, I absolutely love children. Mm. And... Um, and I would love to teach English to the Japanese children in this area. And I'm not sure where, I haven't looked around too much yet, but I know I wanted to work in that uh, area. We have a lot of children in my neighborhood, and um, one of our neighbors happens to speak English. She used to live in uh, Michigan, and uh, her little daughter, she's only three years old, and she's already interested in learning English. She started watching uh, the English television shows that they have for kids on TV <laughs> in the morning here. Yeah, yeah. I also have a friend whose child is four and he became interested in English after meeting me as well and Ooh. I thought that was interesting that the children here are so interested in learning the same language that I speak that I figured uh, why not teach it to them myself. Yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. shouldn't have any problems finding a job teaching English to kids, especially yeah. Komaki or in that area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then also uh, because of the uh, news, you know, uh, last week I also uh, talked about there has been 900% increase mm -hmm. of English learning software in Japan. 900% yeah. yeah. increase in one year. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what? Just in the back. What? There is certainly a demand for it. Yeah, demand for it. And more, more people are looking for, uh, like I'm sure, and cert English Akaiwa school, English uh, language school in Japan, private one. They have uh, thirty percent more, thirty more percent students. We do, we do have a small English school right up the road from me as well. Mm. Yeah, so I'm sure I'm sure you if uh, if you're planning to be an English teacher in Japan, I'm sure you can find it really easily. So, uh Naoko, so uh, I mean, so your your husband worked for a regular kind of manufacturer company, Sarah, in right? So your husband has a regular okay. job. So your husband has a regular job. My husband? Yeah. 
Oh yes, he does. So he works as a kind of regular Japanese salary man type job. Yeah, basically. It, yeah. Okay. So Naoko, so um, what? In terms of job, so you were able to find a job in in Japan, and、uh, how about your husband? What kind of job I could get in Japan? Yeah, no, no. I mean, you 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 were you were able to find a job. You're already working for the job, right? But、uh, how about your husband?、Uh, what it was? What did you have any hard time finding husband's job or?、Uh, what what was it in terms of job 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 wise? It's hard, I think. There are English teaching jobs, but、um, they they're like shift, shift. Yeah,、know? yeah.、Um, it's hard to work a couple jobs together and then kind of juggle and then get get you know hours. I think. Yeah, yeah.、Oh. I think it'll be better to just get、um, full time, nice English teaching job. That would be good, but okay, okay. Yeah, still working on it, I think. Okay, but I mean, you kind of manage to pay your bill right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I mean, so it 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 is kind it it is kind of better situation compared to、uh, what you were in Seattle like two years ago. It's no, I don't know actually. I miss. I miss Seattle. Okay. Really? <laughs> Because well, I could. Yeah.、Uh, I'm sorry. The thing was, I could. I had a job. I if I worked as a waitress, I could make as much as I was making now. But、mm. I didn't want to keep doing that.、Anymore. Yeah. But, but now I think of it, it wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. Waitress, <laughs> it was nice. Okay. Okay.、Yeah. So, do you do you plan to um? Do you plan to go back to U.S. with your husband, or what? What's your plan now?、Mm, I no plan to go back to U.S. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let 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 me know.、Uh, what's that? I think it'll be hard to go back now, really, and my parents would be sad. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So let's let's talk about. Parents stuff.、Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. One one question that I'm just dying to ask is,、um, if you have kids, and I know Naoko, you're already planning.、Um, <laughs> if you have kids, what language will you talk to the kids? Oh, but let me let me ask you first.、Uh, you guys planning to have a kids? Oh, I am. Yes. <laughs> Naoko too. Yeah. yeah. So so um. What? So you guys are in Japan right now. So I think you pretty much are going to raise your. You you are kind of planning to. If you are going to have a kids, are you going to give a planning to give a birth in Japan, Sarah? Yes. And Naoko. Yeah. Okay. So so that you are planning to raise your kids in Japan and in Japanese. The Akim's question, Sarah. Um. Yes, mainly in Japanese, but I would also like them to know English as well, of course. Okay. But、uh, their main language will definitely, most likely, be Japanese since they will be living here. But、um, I would, I really want them to be able to communicate with their grandparents as well. My my parents in America.、Mm, of course, of course.、Yeah. But、um, you know,、um, it's it's really hard though because、uh, yeah. should should you teach your kids two languages at At the same time, or should you teach kids second language when you little bit grow up, like elementary school or middle high school? I mean, I'm able to speak like this. I start really learning English when I was 18, 19. Well, the, they say the the、uh, the brains of children,、uh, since they're like they're, I guess to compare them. To like a new sponge, they can soak up things much easier、yep. than an adult brain can. Yeah, yeah. So I have, I know a lot of children who grew up in like Hispanic families, say、yeah. in America. I have several friends who are Hispanic, and they grew up speaking both languages since they were small children, and they can speak them both very fluently. Yeah, yeah,、um, yeah. But th- though they do、uh, manage to speak only Spanish at home and English outside of their home. Yeah. 
So yeah, so Naoko, so so what are you planning to do? Like do you plan so maybe uh you kinda wanna take a same approach as Spanish family in the US, like you speak to your kids in English at home and then uh maybe uh then let them speak Japanese outside of the house, Sarah? Say that again please. So are you planning to like uh speak to your kids in Japanese? And um, then um that I mean, are you planning to speak to your kids in English and then in in the house and the outside is going to be Japanese? And I see both of your husband in the in the back, yeah. so I kind of I kind of got distracted <laughs> by uh, by the question. But <laughs> yes, what, what no, <laughs> next time I want you guys to convince your husband to be in the camera. Okay, definitely, I'll try. <laughs> okay, but um, back to the question. Yeah. Though, but, um, I, uh, I'm not qu completely sure on how I'll do the language just yet. Uh, as for now, it's going to take me a little while to get completely fluent in Japanese, and I'm not sure exactly when we plan on having a ch our children yet. Okay. But, um, I'll, I'll probably end up speaking what Japanese I know to my children at the time, depending on how far I've advanced in my learning. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll try to speak a, li a little bit of both. But um, my kids, I'd like them to at least know some basic English when they're younger and eventually progress to that. But most of the language will be Japanese since they will be living here and eventually working here. I yeah. think it'll be more important for them to know Japanese than most. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, uh, from the news that uh, I was introducing earlier, many Japanese companies are looking for non-Japanese uh, employee. And that is those true those company are requiring requiring that uh, the company official language to be english anyway mm -hmm. so actually when you when your kids by that time your kids grew up your kids might not need to learn japanese after all <laughs> <laughs> but um well, it would be good to, for them to know both yeah of course they need to of talk course. to their family members of so. course of course of course <laughs> How about how about how about you Naoko? Yes. So uh, when you moved to Japan, I think a uh, job was a primary concern of moving to Japan, though. But uh, what are you like uh, planning to do for your kids? Like, are you plan? Was it reason one of the reason that you wanted to raise your kids in Japan? Mm. Yeah, maybe I thought that the very early education is better in Japan. I think. Mm. And okay. Pre that. preschool, preschool, kindergarten education in Japan. You think it's more advanced? It's. I think it's well balanced. I think it's better. But I don't know because I didn't go in the U.S. But I hear from my husband how how the classes are and the lunches, you know, stuff mm. in elementary school mm. as, are not as good as Japanese. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, but you also know that right now the uh, kindergarten in Japan are scar. I mean, no, no more. It's so full. You know the problem too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now in Japan, uh, kindergarten is completely full because mm -hmm. uh, there's a two type of the kindergarten preschool in Japan. One is the. Uh, uh, kindergarten, other one is, how can I say, hoikuen and yochien, two types. And one is, one is pretty much preschool stuff. And the other one had including kind of nursery kind of uh, system into it. So that later one, yo, yochien is as a preschool, you only send the kids from nine to three pretty much. Uh, uh, catered to pre-educate pre-elementary school education. Later one is for working parents who who where they can uh, send the kids from nine to six or nine to seven, so that uh, parents can go to work. So that nursery one, hoikuen is scarcing right now. So it's really tough. Sometimes it's really tough. For working parents in Japan right now, but um, so uh, I, I'm sure you guys are both working, working. So uh, we'll we can we should 
we should sometime want to talk about this, but uh, here's the one issue. So, um, I have another question for you. Go ahead. Um, in international relationships, sometimes the the issue of uh, who does what, like the gen the gender roles, it's sometimes gender roles can be particularly interesting. Because, for example, in Europe and or in most Western countries, uh, the man takes care of the finances. And in Japan, in Japan, it's the opposite, where the woman will sometimes, or most often, pay the man a certain, let's say, uh, house salary from from their combined salary. So he or he gets, let's say, thirty thousand yen or forty thousand yen per month to spend, and the rest is kept into a bank account. So the woman takes care of the finances in most Japanese families. Um, did you guys ever talk about that with your husbands, or how how does it work for you? Yeah. Should I? Well, uh, yeah, go ahead, Sarah. I mean, no, um, no. In my case, um, we kind of do it equally. Uh, he he has all the money in his in a, an account usually, and um, I haven't gotten my own bank account here yet, so I, I can't really even try to give him his own allowance. So I'm the one that gets the allowance right now. Um, but. He'll what he'll do is um, he'll give me his bank statements and uh, everything, and I try to keep track of those the best that I can. It is a little difficult when he's spending and I'm not knowing it though. But we try to keep it equal and let each other know what's going on, so we can buy everything that's necessary each week for our home and pay our bills. And so far, it's working out uh, pretty well. Okay. Okay. So you you do you do kind of open up your bank statement then? How about how yes. about you? How about you, uh, Naoko? Yeah, we are you know, in America. He did take care of the finances, and I liked it. I don't like to do the finances, but <laughs> yeah, I kind of have to because right now I make a little bit more money than he does, and you know he did make the bank account, but like lately, you know, he didn't have it at the beginning, and I I am doing more. But I think it's gonna be more equal. I think we like it equal. Okay. The money for the bills and yeah. the rest of it in the savings then in whatever. Okay. 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 So, so uh, what, Sarah? What do you what do you guys do on the weekend? Um, usually on the weekend for us, it's uh. We run errands since he gets home pretty late during the weekday. Whatever we can ha get done on the weekend, we'll try to do that. But we try to fit in some fun as well, um, shopping around or uh, trying to take trips whenever we can. Uh, last week, my cousin, she came with her husband to visit us, and we had some fun while they were here. And uh, this whole week, we've just been <laughs> running errands, trying to get everything done. And next weekend, um, we're actually going to be taking a trip out to Shirakawa Go. I've never been there before, so that should be interesting. That'll be something fun that we yeah. haven't done Sh in a while. <laughs> yeah, Shirakawa Go, for your information, it's really, uh, it's the old village in the snowy mount snowing region of uh, Gifu Prefecture and Toyama yeah. Prefecture. And it has really characteristic old house with a really unique tall tent, a tall uh, rooftop. Yeah. They do have a, a website where you can actually go and view a camera live and see how the weather is there. And right now you can see lots of snow through their live camera. Yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping you're gonna take some picture next week and upload oh, it onto the Facebook as you go. So. Uh, <laughs> So okay, cool. How about you, Naoko? What do you do on? Uh, what do you do like? Uh, what? How do you spend time with your husband? Um, we like to go take a walk. We just kind of go walk around the neighborhood. Okay. And uh, go to coffee shops or something. Okay. Yeah. And go to movies. Okay. Go with my parents. Okay. Or, cool. Yeah. You guys don't have any hobbies. Not really hobbies. How about no. you? <laughs> okay. How about you, Sarah? Um, our hobbies usually s tend to go towards uh, art, drawing, and painting. Okay. And he hasn't painted in a long time, but he's very good at it when he does. Uh, okay. And um, I just I sketch whenever I can. Okay. And we like to 
play video games to uh, okay. the Wii. My mother got us a Wii Fit for Christmas, so we were always having fun with that. <laughs> Wii Fit. And, yes, it's very fun. Yeah. And during during the warmer weather, spring and summer, we always go out to uh, Ochii Park and play badminton or take walks and stuff, so that's usually our hobbies. <laughs> okay, okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's uh, any, any, any other question, Akim? Um, yeah, there's one more question. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years down the road? Are you going to be in Japan or do you see yourself moving back to your home country? Sarah, would you disable, enable the webcam? Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, now go. Cool. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in 10 years down the road? In Japan or, in, or back in America? I think if things go kind of normal, then I think we'll stay in Japan. Yeah? Okay. If it's something that, I don't know, something. Okay. Then, uh, I think I, we will be somewhere else. Not sure. Mm, see. Okay, how about you, Sarah? Uh, for me, I see myself here pretty much since we have invested in a, a home, a house. Uh, we're no longer in an apartment. So uh, I see myself here and I even before we bought a house I could see myself staying here. And it's uh, what he wishes and wishes. And uh, my family doesn't wish it so much, but <laughs> it's, something, it's something I wish. It's an experience to live somewhere else. So I, I think I'll enjoy living here 10 years or longer. Good. So, so far you're happy. Yes. How about you, Nago? So far, how about your husband? Does your husband feel okay living in Japan so far, or? I think so. Yeah. Okay. He's enjoying. He goes. He does play basketball, and I think he's enjoying himself. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 So. Uh, all right, the last um, last topic of the day I want to uh, discuss with you. The reason why I picked up the uh, marriage, international marriage issue of this week is because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan released the following press release regarding the HARG Convention, uh, which I mentioned earlier that the uh, Hague Convention is the international treaty among uh, many countries that uh, it's about child custody pretty much it, when you get divorced. Mm -hmm. So uh, NHK, uh, famous Japanese public TV station, uh, uh, had a special program last, uh, last, last, last week on February 2nd. And you know, right now in Japan, one out of 20 marrying couple in Japan are international marriage. So, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, one out of 20 is really high mar marrying. And last year, those international mar marriage couple, last year, 19,400 couple went divorced, filed a divorce in mm. 2009. And it was 7,700 in 1992. So mm, as, yeah. the, as the number of international marriage grew, and so was the number of the divorce. And um, so um, that's why um, the child custody issue is becoming some hot topic in Japan. Uh, once, so what's the Hague Convention Treaty is that uh, if bas the basic rule is if you get divorced, uh, child custody must be judged, must, you know, you must go to the court where child uh, were born and grew up, regardless. Mm -hmm. So you, you are not supposed to take your kids outside of the country. You, you, sh you, child has to stay within the country where the child has grown up. So what happened is that um, if uh, 
if uh, if you are like Naoko, if you're in the U.S. divorce, have a kids uh, raising your kids in the U.S. and divorce, you cannot take your kids to Japan. You have to go through the court, whether you want to go back to Japan or not. And same thing with Sarat. If if they if they have uh, this treaty intact. Uh, you cannot bring your kids to the U.S. You have to go through the court in Japan. So the problem, the J Japan hasn't met the treaty yet. Uh, one, you know, the good thing about the good thing about this hard convention is that you know, child, ch you know, child has been grown up in that country. So. They already got used to being in the country anyway. You shouldn't bring your kids to the uh, other country that they are not used to. Mm. So that's the that's the basic rule behind it. That's the basic concept behind it. But uh, on the other hand, uh, like uh, you, you sometimes your partner has to go through the court procedure in the language that you cannot really speak. And sometimes they, uh, because you cannot speak the language, sometimes uh, um, you you might end up paying a lots lots of money to the uh, lawyer. So NHK was showing the one Japanese woman who got really tired of doing the dealing with the court because she had to spend close to 10 million yen, which is like close to hundred thousand dollar, to the lawyer and living in the foreign country and and go has to go through all the kind of paperwork so she uh, she took her kids home to Japan and she's now being accused by kidnapping charge in that country so then yeah so then then uh, on the other hand um, so that's why so but um, Personally, I think uh, kids should be in the country that they are born, you know, should be kept because that's the country that you are, you are kind of used to it. But uh, on the other hand, NHK was also showing the case of the Switzerland, Switzerland and Australian couple. So Australian husband, uh, so they, they got married in Australia, raising the kids in Australia, but they got divorced wife took the kids to back to the Switzerland mm. but uh, Australian husband filed, filed a, a hard convention treaty and then um, wife was f what, you know the kids was taken away from Switzerland back to Australia but the problem is Australian husband didn't have enough financial backing mm. so kids were sent to the uh, uh, what you call the uh, uh, orphanage? Yeah, orphanage. Really? In in Australia. Wow. The Hog Convention definitely isn't a perfect system. Though. Yeah. So so the problem is that Hog Convention does not um, does not um, uh, yeah so does not really uh, take care about the financial back 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 end of both parents mm -hmm. the, it, it has a loophole so um, even even that Swiss, Swiss, Swiss mother wanted to bring the kids back home they weren't able to do it so Swiss government set up its own rule that uh, if the um, if the uh, other parties in that country is not has some critical problem, it, they haven't really defined what the critical problem is, so it's going to be case by case. But um, Swiss government made the additional law that you you sh you don't have to follow the hard convention if the other party has some uh, problem. So, uh, so Japanese government is debating that. So, the the press release was the survey for with uh, they interview forty uh, Japanese women and guy who has been divorced and facing the similar situation towards a child custody. Mm. So, uh, what do you think? 
<laughs> did, 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 uh, did I make sense, uh, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you made sense. Uh, well, when it comes to uh, divorce, even if it's not between internationals, there are some problems even within each person's own country when yeah. it comes to that. Um, in my opinion, um, I don't think it's right to run off, kidnap them like some people have done. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it's okay if it is agreed on that one of the parents is more financially fit to take care of the children than the other and to have custody over that one. In my case, I do come from a family who of my parents were divorced, but in some case, I know in Japan that the mother usually gets the child and sometimes the father doesn't usually see the child again, right? I'm mm -hmm. not... Yeah. But um, in the United States, both parents always see the children. They, they're switched off and I know if I had not been able to see both of my parents, I would have been uh, devastated. Um, my parents were divorced when I was 12, um, so I was pretty old enough to, you know, know the difference that my mom or my dad's not going to be around all the time. Yeah. But um, I couldn't, I couldn't, I needed both of my parents to grow up, and I think every child should have both of their parents growing up. So, it, but it is more difficult in the international case if one parent moves back to their home country. And and also language barrier too, and cu yes, cultural yes. difference too. Cultural barrier, I yeah. think, is yeah. and, yes. and, and then also, yeah, say, again, yeah, you, you made a really good point that in Japan, usually mother is taking the kids. Mm. Whether whether mother is not financially capable of raising the kids. So husband is eligible to provide the financial back end to the wife. That's that has been the uh, custom of Japanese culture. Mm. So uh, whether no matter what you uh, wife is uh, financially capable or not, um, mother take the kids. It, then husband has to uh, provide the financial support. So to, he, the husband still pays child support. In yeah, Japan, yeah, yeah. So okay. then usually, usually husband don't uh, really meet the kids anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's. But um, it's it's changing. It's changing. So, so you know, it's really important sometimes to to think about this issue uh, especially we start having more international marrying couple so yokos news I, i'm really hoping that we can also talk about um this kind of sensitive issue so that before i want you guys keep marrying <laughs> i want you to have, i want you to be happy uh, thank but, you yeah so uh but uh oh shoot the video got froze yeah my uh, video's gone completely yeah, yeah. okay anyway so so, uh, but yeah, but anyway, we we should uh, we should um, wanna I wanna talk about you know I want to support from the Yokos News and be like fair um, perspective and then talk about um, these kind of stuff. So uh, um, in the future, I also want to talk about all kinds of paperwork and stuff that you guys went yes. through. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> That was frustrating, but we made it through it somehow. <laughs> uh, so, can you briefly talk about your paperwork uh, journey, Sarah? <laughs> uh, well, it started in the U United States. Uh, I was I booked a ticket, a one-way ticket to Japan, because I knew I wasn't coming back. Uh, I was told by um, the travel agency that I went through that all we had to do was get the correct paperwork from immigration. And my husband went to immigration and they told him all he needed to do was uh, translate our marriage license and our uh, and write a letter of guarantee since we have gotten married in the United States back in October. Mm. Um, it was very easy in the United States to get married. All he needed was his passport showing that he was not going to be living here since uh, he, we were going to be moving to Japan. So that yeah. was the easy part. Mm. But once we got there, when I started coming here, things got a little more difficult. And But he got everything. He had the marriage license translated in the correct format, the correct paperwork, uh, the correct format for the letter of guarantee. And he mailed them to me, express mail, because I had to have them immediately, which cost a bit of money. And I get to the airport the day that I'm leaving, and I was told by my flight that they wouldn't accept that paperwork. And they told me to call my travel agency. <laughs> And I called my travel agency and they said, well, that should work. 
the travel agent, she's Japanese and she spoke English quite fluently and she knew what I was talking about. Um, I told the lady at the desk the same thing that she had told me. She said, we still can't accept this. You have to pay $3,000 for a return ticket. Huh. Well, a, a lot of chaos happened, crying and fighting. And, um, but then she finally decided to tell us that it was fully refundable. Oh. And we're like, oh, well, you could have told us that earlier, but <laughs> things worked out. Okay. And uh, finally I got to, I was on my way to Japan, but of course bad luck struck and my flight was canceled. <laughs> so I was stuck in Detroit. Um, but I eventually did get to Japan and uh, we were told we had to apply for my, um, my visa within three months of our marriage and we were running out of time uh, because we had gotten married in October and uh, it was already middle of January by the yeah. time we were getting things done. Uh, um, so that's a reminder for many people it has to be done within three months of your oh, marriage. Okay. Oh, that's um, that's good good point. Yeah, so I, yes. I, I really want to introduce all the uh, kind of on a paperwork that you guys went through. Now, okay. did you did you have uh, any, uh, what was your just a brief, uh, brief uh, um, impression of your uh, marriage in terms of immigration work. How was it? It was, a, I think it was a more big deal for me in the United States because I had to get, I was getting green card. And uh, okay. Very hard. It, it was a lot of documents and I had to fill and a lot of money too. Okay. But, we got married in at the U.S. and I had a green card and we filed the marriage certificate for Japan when we were in the U.S. already. So when he came to Japan, it wasn't, it was easy. He just came here with a, a just a, a one-way ticket. Okay. And, and he um, applied for a year visa, a support visa. Okay. And they were just easy paperwork also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the visa work is pretty easy. That was a, a good easy part, just mm. having to run back and forth to all the uh, immigration centers and whatnot was a little mm. stressful, but it was not too bad that I couldn't handle it. We, I did get my uh, alien registration card before that, but I only had the paperwork, and they do accept the paperwork for anybody that doesn't know that as well. Um, they'll stamp they'll staple paperwork for your alien registration card into your passport mm. and uh, the immigrations for your visa will accept that as well um, mm. if you don't have your card yet mm. um, okay. and it didn't it didn't take it took about maybe three weeks for me to get my alien registration card and just uh, maybe a week and a half for my visa to get uh, ready so all that worked out and just went back to the City and um, stamp on the back of my alien registration card that I'm allowed to stay here past my uh, leaving date that was on my uh, my passport, my mm. the tourist visa that I got. Mm. Okay. Mm. So okay. it wasn't too difficult. So, so you came into Japan as a tourist visa, yes. then you switch over to spouse visa after yes. you came to Japan. Yes, and I I heard that you can get your spouse visa before going as well. I'm not entirely sure. Now, did you did you get your husband's spouse visa before you come to Japan or after you come to Japan? After, I think you can get it before, but we just we were lazy, too lazy. To get it. <laughs> In my case, we were just misinformed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, so Naoko, you thought that uh, getting the green card for you was much more difficult than getting a spouse visa in Japan. Money. Money. Okay. Uh, it is it is very expensive also just to get a, a spouse visa. Well, but not I'm not sure how much it was for a green card, so it probably was nowhere near as expensive as a green card. Uh, I'm sure. Well, um, if you can review, did you guys uh, hire a lawyer? Sarah? Uh, I, I did not, know. We did everything by ourselves. Oh, trooper. How about you, Naoko? <laughs> yeah, we did everything by ourselves. Oh, oh. trooper. Oh, we cool. Got, we got a check by, um, like, a lawyer kind of person for, like, 20 bucks to check our documents. So oh. We just oh, got kind of check, yeah. No. Oh. I do have a little bit of uh, information for some people who, if your spouse is the one supporting you in Japan, um, you cannot get a spouse visa if your company has not paid their taxes for uh, on time. 
Um, my husband's company had a little problem where they hadn't paid their taxes on time that month and they wouldn't let me have my visa until that was finished. Oh, really? Uh -huh. oh. That is a warning for people out there that if, if your company has not paid their taxes on time, um, you won't be able to get your spouse visa. Oh, cool. Good, good, good information. I mean, I, I kind, I want to write, I want, I need to watch this show again to write down all the information. <laughs> I can uh, ask uh, my husband more on, on the details if you want me to, and I can send you that as well. Sure, sure. I mean, can you, can you write all the, all the procedure steps that you guys went through? Yes, and then definitely. Uh, we can share at the peop with the people of Miyoko Sunyu's. I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. Um, I mean, immigration is always the hassle. Oh yes. So, so, uh, but it's really important and it's headache. But I, I also just pay my taxes last Monday. Oh well, my we, God. We paid our taxes on Friday and that was a little hassle as well. <laughs> we, we had to travel to three different city halls because of yeah. all the areas that we lived in. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I also had to go to tax office, city hall, and prefecture office to pay my taxes. So, yeah, by we Yoko to, News. We went to Komaki City Hall, Kasugai City Hall, to the tax office, uh, back to those city halls, and back to the tax office. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I had a headache by the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so, did so, but your com your husband company handling your taxes too, right? Or oh, you had to do it by yourself? Um. His uh, uncle actually was helping us with our taxes, so oh. we, we did that ourselves and with his advice as well, because his uncle owns his own company. Oh, okay. So he was very knowledgeable in all the tax work that they do for that company. Oh, okay. okay. So we had some help on that, but um, the tax problem that we were having was his company's taxes of yeah. their yeah. own. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, about, how about you, Naoko? Uh, do, do you have to do your taxes? Your husband has to do your tax? Yeah, I think he has to do his taxes. I haven't looked into yet. Okay, well, it's March 15. Uh -huh. It's 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 uh, it's it's getting less than a month. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's done. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I, I did mine, so. Uh, if, um, if, it, if it was up to me doing it, I'd procrastinate like crazy, so I'm kind of glad he <laughs> did all that. Uh, <laughs> As part of that, he did everything like that in the United States. He did my taxes. Uh, now I have to do it, it's like so hard. <laughs> well, talk to your, talk to your, you know, talk to your, like, uh, uh, ta accountant until, find your accountant until it's too late, man. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So anyway, um, you guys cannot really stay long, so I'm going to wrap up real as a really quick show today. So uh, any last comment, um, Sarah? Uh, well, I'm I'm glad to be part of Yoko So News now, and I'll hope to be involved more often. And uh, it's nice to meet everyone that's watching, and it's nice to meet uh, Naoko and Akim as well. All right, cool. Now now go. Hey, can you can you be on the Yoko News more often to talk about your experience and stuff? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, yeah. it's it's a it's a great encounter with you at the coffee shop in San Diego. <laughs> now expanding to Yoko News here in Japan. So it's kind of great. Um, so uh, thank thank you very much. I I eat meat. <laughs> send you a message on the Facebook earlier this morning and hey Naoko oh I remember you married to American guy in Tokyo can you can you be on the show <laughs> so thank you very much for the last minute request but um, yeah we can we, 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 we I want to talk more about what we should do and stuff so thank you very much Naoko no thank you for having me nice to meet you all right mm -hmm. cool Akim nice to meet you Akim nice yeah last comment uh, no, I just wish the uh, the two lovely ladies uh, all the best <laughs> in, in their new lives in Japan and hope to see them again on the show. Yeah, Thank you. so then we, we have to find ours, right, Akim? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so you can find them, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so a any of you are available, uh, <laughs> send us an email. No. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. All right. 
So uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, it has been the uh, number 11th of Yokos News Weekly, live from Yokaichi Mie, Japan, Nagoya, Komaki, and Tokyo, Tokoroza, Saitama, Japan, to talk about international marriage between Japanese and non Japanese. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for next. Oh, shoot. Oh, last, last thing. Um, Sarah and Naoko, what are you going to do on your Valentine's Day? Uh, I'm gonna make my homemade chocolates as usual and I'm gonna do my apple pie that I'm pretty good at from my grandmother's recipe. Oh. So, I like to add my own little thing. Hey, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you really report that? Um, as take take a picture and send yeah. it, send it, send them to absolutely. me. Cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Or better yet, let's have a show next weekend about Valentine's Day, and Sarah can make the apple pie for us. <laughs> well, I, I can. It, I'll have to prepare some of the stuff ahead of time because it takes a couple of hours. But <laughs> I can do that if you guys want me to. Uh. <laughs> uh, I, I next Sunday I kind of do have to go to some. Uh, politicians meeting Sunday but uh, we'll I have to check the schedule mm -hmm. but um, uh, Naoko what what is your what is your um, uh, what is your plan for Valentine's Day um, I don't know I think we'll just go get a uh Go to a coffee shop and have a, a piece of cake or something together. <laughs> coffee, coffee shop and piece of cake. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. Okay, okay. She's not gonna battle all the teenagers for the chocolates at the grocery store. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one of these days, uh, Sarah and Naoko, I like I I want a female's perspective of Valentine's Day, not you know. Um, Battle and stuff. So uh, maybe, maybe not this year, yeah, but ne <laughs> maybe next year. So uh, maybe. all right, <laughs> cool. So uh, next week, uh, Sun. I I don't know. I'm if I'm going to do Sunday. I might have to reschedule. I have to check. I'm. I I was too lazy to check uh, for this week. So uh, but. Uh, uh, that has been the show of uh, uh, Yokos News Weekly. Thank you, Luis, uh, for the comment. Luis, uh, very informative and personal. I enjoyed it. My background music worked great. Robert, it was great hearing. I'd seen the Sarah again. <laughs> Thank, it's thank one of my for, friends. Hey, Robert. Okay. Good, good. Thank you, Robert, for watching watching us. And Robert, I, I'm I'm asking Sarah to be on the show more often, so you'll be able to uh, see her more. So, uh, all right, cool. Thank you guys very much. It has been the Yokos News Weekly number eleven. See you next week. Got see you. Thank you. See Bye. you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>